This is Mirage. Mirage makes a living as a travel rider. He loves motorcycling, golf, playing the guitar, and just bumming around. He's decided to travel for a year to find himself. About time. This is Johan. Johan is a photographer. Johan is Swedish, but he's lived and worked in four continents. He's done some pretty interesting gigs along the way. Johan's current obsession is shooting astral time lapses. He plans to backpack in India for a year of travel and adventure. The city of lakes might seem a little bland, but as monikers go, it's preferable to the Venice of the East. If you ask me, Udaipur doesn't need validation, especially by lofty comparisons with international destinations. Framed against the low hills of the Aravalli range that have kept the sands of the Thar Desert at bay, Udaipur's landscape is punctuated instead by seven lakes that imbue the city with a cool breeze that you don't expect in Rajasthan. Udaipur is one of the most visited cities in India, especially for international visitors, and the city sets its own benchmark when it comes to hospitality. Enticed by images of gorgeous ramparts, towering over water bodies spanned by old bridges, colourful festivals, magnificent hotels and souvenir shops, all peddling a nostalgia-hued vision of a regal history. People from all over the world make a beeline for Udaipur to start their India experience. Six years ago, Johan was one of these people. <laughs> yeah, it is exactly back to square one. I mean, I was here six years ago, one month, six years and one the month, exact right? same spot. Because <laughs> so I was asking everybody when I landed, where should I go? You know, and everybody told me, you need to go to Rajasthan. So they told me Udaipur, Jodhpur, Jaisalmer, Pushkar Camel Fair, you know, the, the super cliche stuff now. So you're going to show me around? This was all new. You're going to show me around then? Huh? Yeah, let's you know the city well, don't you? <laughs> I don't know if I'd say I know it well, but at least I've been here before. So did you live here somewhere when you came? So when I first reached, I actually stayed over here just for one night, just until I could get my bearings straight. I had my first coffee over here. And then I found that treasure over there, which, which is still a treasure to one? this day. Which one? The little yellow one right there, the one that looks kind of shabby. Because <laughs> obviously these places are super expensive, right? right. They're very fancy places, right. um, which uh, I couldn't afford at the time because sure. I was, you know, a poor backpacker. Basically, do we just lie back and sort of soak in the sun today or what's the plan? Um, we should actually go and do all the things that you should do when you reach Udaipur for the first time. Which is what? Since you're the tour guide. <sighs> You can go to the lake, um, what is it called? The City Palace. City Palace, okay. And they have a vintage car museum around also. Oh, do they? You oh, would probably yeah, find it. That's interesting. Where in the palace? That is uh, not in the palace. Do they have a golf course somewhere? You yeah. can go and explore for a golf course, and I'll go to the Shilpgram Festival. Yeah, okay. I'm not coming to Shilpgram. Shilpgram is about arts and crafts. I'm not, I'm not cultured. Museum, I'm, I'm not cultured enough for that. Okay, finish your coffee <laughs> and then let's head there. Let's head on. Mm. thought Johan was trying to chat up a stranger, which he's been known to do sometimes, and I kept my distance lest he gets a royal snub. But then this girl started talking to him and I realized she looked rather familiar. Took a minute to figure out that this was Svenja, who we'd met a few months back in Ladakh. 
from Suru Valley to Udaipur, Swenya has certainly been traversing all over India. I remember her all too well. She made short work climbing this intimidating rock at the Suru Boulder Fest. Johan obviously prefers her company and wants to go with her on a boat ride, which I'm not particularly keen on. It's a win-win situation. Supposedly they are over there. Okay. I never took a boat ride the last time I was in Udaipur. I mean, a boat ride is one of those things you wouldn't want to take alone. With Svenja by my side, it was a lovely experience. that was shot in the palace. No, I haven't. I haven't, I, seen, any, I haven't seen any films that have been based here, except for uh, the James Bond film. So you've seen that one? I, I was going to ask if you saw yeah. that one. Yeah, I found that quite amusing when I reached. Like every other guest house says, you know, we're, mm. we're just playing octopusy here in our restaurant. You know, you can come, <laughs> and have a, come and have food at our, come and have dinner at our place. Because seven o'clock every night, every night. Oh God. We, uh, <laughs> we showcase James Bond octopus. Everything in Udaipur revolves around Lake Pichola. And there's nothing quite like seeing Udaipur from the lake. Udaipur is such a scenic city. And even though getting on the lake feels like a very touristy thing to do, it's entirely worth the time and money. We're going to head to Schiltgram, where an annual art and crafts festival is on right now. Time to pick up some souvenirs. Oh yeah! Udaipur is chock-a-block with tourists. Not the best time to head for the city's most visited monument, the city palace, but what the heck, I'm here and it seems like a waste not to try. Wow, never come to Udaipur city palace on a weekend or a holiday. Possibly the worst day I could have picked to come here. It's a carnival and uh, if you had to avoid crowds, well, then it's kind of like counterproductive to come to places like these on a holiday. Phew, visiting the palace wasn't such a smart move, but I'm hoping there'll be fewer people at Udaipur's royal family's vintage car museum. Udaipur, like all other erstwhile princely states, uh, retains, uh, the royal family retains a collection of uh, really classy vintage cars, which is really more up my street. They have a vintage car museum, so I'm going to go and check that out. Uh, hopefully there will be fewer people there and uh, then I just want to find like a quiet spot and relax and maybe read a book or something. Johan's taken off, I'm sure he's having a good time. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> Rajasthan's erstwhile royal families are known to have a penchant for luxury cars and a number of them continue to maintain garages with enviable fleets. A few months back, Johan and I were left wide-eyed in wonder when we chanced upon one such collection in the small town of Samod near Jaipur. By that yardstick, it's no surprise that Udaipur's fabulously wealthy royal family has a world-famous collection that includes more than a few Rolls-Royce cars among other rare machines. The pick of the lot when it comes to pop culture is the 1934 Rolls-Royce Phantom that was driven by the villain in the 1983 James Bond film Octopussy, parts of which were shot in Udaipur. Other beauties include a 1946 Buick, a pair of Cadillacs and even a Morris Minor 100. I love the Morris, not in the least because it's the ancestor of the Hindustan ambassador. I've had an ambi for the last decade and as much as I love it, the itch to own a genuine vintage has never gone away. There are hundreds of stalls selling all kinds of Rajasthani handicrafts and artifacts here. Mm -hmm. 
Spoiled for choice would be an appropriate phrase, except that I'm almost at a loss of what to buy, simply by dint of the overwhelming choice all around. Hello. <laughs> Hello, G. What are these things? Yellow whistles? This sound city. City. So a bird? Bird city. Little whistle. Without water sound. Okay. That's the sound. This uh, water, water is the sound. The... Oh, oh, wow. It's like it's calling out a bird song. And this one with Pani and Zion. Yes, water. A ceramic bird whistle that takes out the sweetest bird sounds when you put water into it. What a fascinating little trinket. <laughs> Are they different? Awesome. The yellow one. Is the yellow one different? No. Same. All the same. same. All the same. But then if it's more funny... Water level is a different sound. Right. 30 rupees. Sure. All right, give me uh, two of each. Do yellow, do blue, and do green. Six, uh, oh, total six. six. Full bird family. These are so funny, aren't they? Is it hard though, or do you just blow and it happens automatically? Just, yeah, just try it out. You have to like angle it in the right way. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> wow, it's almost like I can perform some sort of art without really? even having any skill. <laughs> it's very cool. It's very nice. Mm, I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> I had expected a large number of foreigners. Always the case when it comes to events like these in Rajasthan. But to my surprise, Svenja and I are the only ones. I can't complain though, we got a fair bit of attention, danced a bit, went nuts shopping and found the most outstanding souvenir. We've decided to go beyond the old city and explore the suburbs. On the outskirts, in a place called Badi, is an animal shelter called Animal Aid. Johan had vaguely heard about this place because a friend of his had volunteered here. We called and were told that visitors are welcome at the centre. Raj? Hi. Raj? <laughs> Raj Kishore Verma, who spoke with us over the phone, says he's happy to take us around the facility. Yeah, these are our main decks, our main control center. Control so center? Yeah, so where like we attend all the calls. Okay. So people every day they're getting, like we're getting more than 60 to 70 calls. You've got a call now, I think they're busy. Yeah. 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 So we'll go from this yeah. We have double gate system so that right. no, none of the dogs can escape. Well, yeah, no. I mean, if double security. Yeah. Well, if I was a dog, I wouldn't want to escape. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are having a wheel of a time. Yeah. Oh, what's up? She looks sad. What happened to her? Her name is Honey. Honey? Yeah. Actually, her honey story color. is a case of a human cruelty. A really? human cruelty? Someone had thrown acid on her back. What? This this much area was burnt. But now it looks what is wrong with people, yeah. So but it took, now it looks relatively healed. Yeah, it took more than six months honey. to get healed from that. Wow. We couldn't find that guy, but still we filed a case. You yeah. filed a case, no? Yeah, and we haven't released her back because that area is not safe for her. Right, of course. She's with us for more than two years. Two years? Honey, how are you doing? No. Good. She's fully healed now? Yeah. Like she has use of her rear legs also? Yeah, yeah. Good. And so what area is this? this uh, Basically, this is our main trauma area. So whenever a new dog comes, first they comes in this area. She is having stitches on oh, her backside and a wound, okay. so she don't leak. Oh, so she doesn't leak. This is for the yeah. <laughs> oh. the she also the gets her own funnel. echo chamber. So where should we head to now? So this yeah, is this side. basic medicine over here. Yeah. With rescue teams, a sanctuary and a hospital, Animal Aid has rescued and treated over 40,000 animals in the decade and half of its existence. 
and there's no prejudice when it comes to animals. So there are dogs, roosters, donkeys, cows, bulls, sheep, you name it. The center has a helpline and rescues over 15 animals every day. This is, oh, this is not the, this is the cattle area, the donkey yeah. also. Cattle area for Big animals. animals. Large animals, yeah. Large animals. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Some of these look like they're from... Uh... Oh, look at that. Plaster is yeah? Yeah. Accident is the most common. Fractured a leg? Fracture. You can see all the other calves and... You put a proper plaster then like... Proper plaster, yeah. Like yeah. This is where all the cattle are brought. And cattle yeah. also same thing again. You have mostly, uh, mostly accidents. Yeah, accident is the most common. But if I especially talk about cows, this area is like hospice, we can say. It's okay. like a hospice, okay. Yeah, because most of the cows, they come from the last stage. Good work, you know. Oh, this is our main sanctuary where okay. all the animals they are living their okay. happy, peaceful, retired Hi, life. Hi, donkey. Hi, baby. Basically, it's our happy area. This is your happy area. Yeah, <laughs> and all the animals they live together. Cow is a dog. Dog is a donkey. Donkey is a buffalo. Every donkey in this area they are disabled. They are disabled. Either they have hoof problem or band twisted leg. Or Band twisted leg? It's just oh, because band of the twisted leg, okay. Yeah, it's just because of the people, the because particular community who makes them work. Yeah. They put much load on them, break stones and... Oh, that bends their legs yeah. permanently. And what they do, they tie their leg also, the front and the back one, oh. with a very thin plastic rope. Oh, so this is a sign. Yeah, it's all from that. This one, huh? because yeah. of a plastic tie, but why would they tie their legs? So they can't run away or run fast. No. Oh. And our donkey, especially in this area, they are quite <laughs> smart. Yeah, well, don't, don't well, they, they know to open that big gate. They know how to open the big really? gate. Basically, two of them. One is Smokey. Uh, Smokey. And, <laughs> and the other one is Pigeon Toes. These two, they have trained their other friends also. Oh, yeah. how to they open the gate? Yeah, other. that's why we had built the second gate. Oh, oh otherwise yeah, they were awesome. planning an yeah. escape, wasn't In it? the morning, like, it's totally confusion. All these donkeys are in the other side. and. Yeah. So How did they get there? <laughs> yeah. Oh, every night they're planning their escape. Yeah, before, yeah. You must have been smoking. What do you do outside? Aren't you happy? Yeah, Smoke is the leader. Is this guy smoking? No, no. He's somewhere. So what's this smoking. guy's name? He's Ragu. Ragu. Okay, Ragu. That one is Viru. Can we meet Smokey? Can we see yeah, the yeah. leader? He's, the, he's Smokey. He's this smoky. one is Smokey. Yeah, this the great leader. One. The yeah. leader of the pack. <laughs> he's the smartest I need one. A, I need to get a selfie with Smokey. He looks like yeah. he's, he's quite a selfie, old. He's a selfie king. He's a selfie king, no? yeah. that's perfect. He'll Smokey, can I get a selfie with you? It's nothing like a donkey <laughs> selfie. Okay, I'm going to get one. Smokey, I believe you're good at this. Yeah, he knows how to pose. <laughs> you can get two donkeys <laughs> in the same frame there, Mirage. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I'm only getting me and half a donkey. Come on, Smokey! One and a half? Or <laughs> Come on, Smokey! Come on! He's in eating. Whoops! Oi, oi, oi. No, Smokey, Whoa. no worries. We saw a number of volunteers at Animal Aid. Some were feeding the animals while others were playing with them. Sejal from Bengaluru has come to Udaipur specifically to volunteer for a week at the facility. What do you think of the place? You must be loving it, eh? Yeah, I completely love it. I think it's heaven or oh, this is what heaven must look like. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. How long did you stay the first time you were here? Uh, the first time uh, I came last year and it was for about uh, eight days and now I'm here for about nine to ten days. Okay, so you've come, have you come just for this? Yeah, I come only for volunteering. Okay. While Sejal will leave in a few days, there are others like Ayla from Israel who came to volunteer but stayed on to work full time. Ayla now calls Udaipur home. So you have been for many years at this place? Uh, right? Almost three years, yeah. Full time for three years? Uh, yeah. So how is it like to live in Udaipur as a city? Oh my god, it's heaven. It's yeah. amazing. Um, it's obviously a lot because of this place, Animal yeah. Aid, but um, it's India generally that feels yeah. like home for me. It's Udaipur, yeah. it's Badi, it's this specific village. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just sometimes you just reach to a place and immediately it's filled to your home. Do you have a gift shop or something? Like, can we buy some, can we buy some souvenirs and um, like in that way contribute to what you're doing? Or? You can buy t-shirts. Um, that, yeah. That's actually the donation for here, but okay. really cool. Can I get a t-shirt? Exactly. Hey! Colorful t-shirts. Has this man been bothering you? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> you found it. <laughs> so yeah, this is one. We have many other colors, very many nice. other animals. But that's a very funny like print. I like this one, you know. This with one the, my with friend, the, 
<laughs> Fantastic. Alrighty, I'm going to pick one of them up too. Yeah, yeah, should we go? Yeah. It was a pleasure fine. to meet you. Thank you. Same. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> illegal to keep this star tortoise especially. It's called the star tortoise. Yeah. Star tortoise. Okay. Actually they are endangered species. Okay. And There's we have authority to keep them because we are running this rescue center. So it's like they're, some of their shells have gotten cracked. Yeah, or each or and every you tortoise. Each and every one of them. Yeah, yeah. Can I feed you? And why do you think that would have happened? Because they would have been run over or something? Yeah, ran over, maybe some other wild animals uh, have attacked them. or. So how old would this turtle be, would you estimate? No, we're not know, sure, eh? yeah. More than 50, 60 years. Really? Oh, these are at least 50, 60 years old? Yeah. I love turtles. They're funny animals, you know. They're, they're yeah. quite unique, you know. And they're not very common in the wild either. You don't really see, like, you know, turtles crossing the road. No. This guy is just constantly like, he, want to, he wants yeah. to walk over his food. Yeah, his name is Romer. 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 He, he always tried to escape from this area. Oh, he's trying to escape? Yeah, yeah. that's why we had built that uh, fence, that gate. Oh, how would this okay. guy escape? They do, they're they are huh? not that slow. It would take him one and a half years to get to the gate. He did two times. Really? He did. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's the thing. Every animal's natural instinct is to be in the wild. Yeah. Roma, where are you going? He's roaming. <laughs> <laughs> that's our cue. To roam as well. All right. Everyone we saw at Animal Aid, the workers, the volunteers and the staff, seem to be going about their work with patience and purpose. The sense of urgency was confined to the desk manning the helpline. Big cities can desensitize those of us who live in them. You get used to seeing and turning a blind eye to misery, human or animal. What we don't realize is that by doing so, we cheat ourselves of our unique ability to be compassionate and to think beyond just ourselves. And really, what else makes us human? Yeah.